is that Robin Rose on Rose Avenue makes rose petal ice cream. Yes, yeah. We get our crystallized rose petals from Switzerland. We let some rose petals soak and some are added at the last minute so they keep their crystalline characteristic. And it's just one of those things that a small company can do. Rose petal would never make it to the pint size mass market distribution. Robin thinks we all like ice cream because of the butter fat. Our whole sensory being, we're really responding to those round molecules. The mouthfeel of ice cream is incredibly sensuous. I just think that our neurotransmitters must go sparking off saying, this is as good as it gets. This is it. <laughs> wow. They do something else here with ice cream. Ha! Traffic school for chocoholics. I got a ticket. <laughs> so I went to a traffic school, and I learned nothing. So I came home, and I said, that was just a horrible experience. We're going to start a traffic school. It's going to be called Traffic School for Chocoholics. We'll give them ice cream and chocolate. We'll make them happy. It's a good idea. OK, you're in traffic school for the second part. The good idea included Robin's husband, Roy, who runs these classes. You see, in California, when you get a ticket, you can go to traffic school to get a minor offense wiped off your record. These traffic schools are privately run, and lots of them have gimmicks in the spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down tradition. The chocoholics meet in the back room where Robin Rose makes the ice cream. None of these students has done anything really bad. The reason for being here was going too fast on Pacific Coast Highway. I missed a stop sign. We're both here for the same thing, actually. <laughs> Illegal left turns. <laughs> <laughs> there was even a husband and wife team. Just a coincidence, within five, five days, days of each other, different intersections, we both went down for the same offense. <laughs> there are always sublime Robin Rose chocolates on the tables. And after about two hours, Roy goes over to the freezer and helps make the second half of the evening go faster. Who wants something? White chocolate. White chocolate. Oh, what would you like? Do you have Any a lot of it? Any one of those. Maybe to the vanilla. And it's very rich and very perfumey. Thank you so much. You know, I mean, you get halfway through your evening and you get instantly gratified by having, you know, ice cream. And that's hard to beat. I went to traffic school once before and it was really terrible. It was, it was one of the ones that was supposed to be a comic school, but it was extremely unfunny. I look at it this way. The officer who wrote me the ticket is outside sitting in the cold on his motorcycle. I'm in here with ice cream and coffee. Last night I had uh, the bittersweet and pralines and cream, which is a nice combo too. We're all spent Venice to have uh, an ice cream oriented uh, traffic school. You know, the truth is, just about everything goes better with ice cream. Road trips have always seemed shorter if you stop for a cone. And you know, some roadside ice cream places are irresistible. In Panama City, Florida, there's a place called Dairy Dome. It used to be called Bentley's before. I changed it to Dairy Dome because I felt like Bentley's sounded like a pair of shoes. Hi, welcome to Dairy Dome. Can I take your order, please? OK, I want two large chocolate cones, please. OK, thank you. Drive to the window. Everybody likes ice cream, right? You never get too old to, to not to enjoy an ice cream, and I'm just a happy type person, like to see happy people. The man inside the cone is John Waglinski. He sells soft serve, as well as scooped ice cream and sherbets. This is a rainbow sherbet, three dip. The maximum dip that you put on the cone, <laughs> and they're good. It's simple. A wacky building attracts business. It is an attraction, I do. I do see a lot of out-of-state tax come through here, and uh, quite a few cameras every now and then. Well, it's cheap, but the ice cream's really good. <laughs> I'd say 90% of the business is a drive through There's a, a, a speaker in the menu board behind. They placed their order. I filled the order. They drive through the windows. I provide the order and collect the cash for it. Feel like Clint Eastwood today. Smile and drive off. Little kids love this place. In attraction, uh, when they come in, they usually ask for one the size of this building when they want to come. I don't pay for advertisement. I think a word of mouth is the best. Uh, now, I give a good product, a good quantity for a fair price, and those people come back and they bring their friends. Mmm, mm. boy, is that good. People do develop ice cream habits. When you find good stuff, 
you go back. In the shore town of Stone Harbor, New Jersey, there's a place called Springer's. Springer's is the best ice cream. They have the most creamiest ice cream. It's like a tradition. We come here every year to Stone Harbor and it's nice end to the evening and then we'll walk back and the sun will go down and the beach is there and it's just a nice night out. <laughs> It's very good homemade ice cream, especially Springer Chip. He has Springer Chip. Is it chip. something special about it, or is it something psychological? I don't no, know. It's both. Neil and Barbara Humphreys have owned this place since 1975. They say the homemade ice cream here has attracted people since the 1920s, often a lot of people. A long line forms every summer evening. It's, it's five, six deep in there, and that's part of the charm, too, waiting in line. It is. Right? Yeah. It never was for me. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're inside, it's a little bit frantic. I think the customers expect a certain amount of that. I think they'd be very disappointed if they could walk in and everything was very sterile and you just walked in in one line and went out and there'd be no chaos. They enjoy seeing all the activity. As a matter of fact, they get so involved looking at what's going on, they let their number go by because they're very involved in watching the activity behind here. Even so, a lot of people notice that potpourri is half price. Potpourri is a mixture of all different flavors, different layers of different flavors. It's like a potluck, and uh, you just take your chances. Ian Toner makes most of the ice cream here. These last bits of ice cream are what we're going to be putting into our potpourri. It's not enough to make a full can of ice cream, so we'll just mix it in with some other flavors. Sometimes it's some pretty bad combinations. Maybe eggnog and mint mixed together, which I don't think is a good combination. Ian and his assistant, Jay Daring, make around 50 regular flavors. These are the almonds that we got. Uh, we use these for several different flavors, but we were kind of hoping we wouldn't get them in today so we could go to the beach a little bit earlier. <laughs> yeah, but Jay and Ian both know these are pretty delicious summer jobs. Sometimes I do taste this ice cream, but it's not to see if it's ready or if everything's mixed together. It's just to enjoy ice cream because I do enjoy eating ice cream. And I like to sample my work. I think this ice cream is ready to go. Ian makes ice cream on a small scale. It's sold only right here at Springer's. At an ice cream factory in Southbury, Connecticut, they make ice cream on a larger scale using computer controls and monitors. The process is basically the same, just bigger, more machines. Here today, they're making Mattis's low-fat ice cream. Low-fat products are now the fastest growing segment of the business. Right now, you can buy Mattis ice cream in about 14 states. The Mattis's formula was developed by Doris Mattis Hurley and her husband, Kevin Hurley. They worked on it for years, primarily at the ice cream labs at Penn State. I hate saying low fat. I have to say low fat, and it is low fat, but I wish I could just say Mattis's ice cream, because that's what it is. It's ice cream. It's just a different way of making it than they've made it over the past 70 or 80 years. Their recipe, however, is a secret. A huge secret. Don't ask me the formula. <laughs> When she's here at the factory, Doris occasionally stabs a pint of product. Oh, that's a thermometer. Every time you make ice cream, you're freezing ice crystals. And if it's frozen at a different temperature, you don't get the same smoothness. The main thing that I'm looking for is that the ice cream is made consistently the same way every time. The logo of Mattis's low-fat ice cream says a family tradition. My family's been in the ice cream business for 70 years. My grandma started making lemon ices in the Bronx, and at nine years old, my dad, Reuben Mattis, was delivering lemon ices all over the Bronx in a horse and buggy. Reuben Mattis was known as the emperor of ice cream, and he was a very special man. He's the man that created haagen ice cream. I do remember when my dad first decided to make haagen ice cream. It was in 1959, and I was a mere child. haagen is an all-American super premium ice cream with a foreign-sounding name that really means nothing. He actually made the name up. He sat there, and he just said names until haagen came out of his mouth, and he said, that's it, I'm going to call it haagen -Dazs.